An entity who masquerades as a young boy sets its sights on a teen. A boy came walking in. I looked at it like, oh, my nephew's here. I looked over and I realized no. It taunts and teases, and then it attacks. It changed form and it actually looked like a gargoyle. It had the claws. He had a really menacing grin, very sharp teeth. <laughs> Evil is the easiest way to, to put it. <laughs> we expel you now, demon. I knew the battle had begun. Go on, do it. Can he be saved before it's too late? This demon was trying to take full possession of Nolan. In America, there is real evil. It lurks in the darkest shadows and in our most ordinary towns. Between the worlds we see Someone's in my room. and the things we fear, there are doors when they are open. Nightmares become reality. I was probably six when I realized that I see things that everybody else does not see. I would see things kind of dirt around or people just kind of standing there off to the side. Is it him? Is it Grandpa? Yeah. He could tell you anything about his great-grandpa. He'd gotten his arm caught in a corn picker when he was younger, and it was off just above the elbow, and he knew which arm. Nolan was a year old when he died. Come on, son. Help us pack the car. Sure, Mom. Jackie Lydolph doesn't question her 16-year-old son's gift. She has gifts of her own. Mine's more just the feeling. I don't necessarily see it, but I still have that feeling to know that there's something. I have strong instinct. The odd man out is Nolan's dad, Dennis. I wasn't a believer in anything paranormal. I kind of dismissed it. While he doesn't share his family's paranormal sensitivities. Did you grab that for me? He does play along when planning the annual family vacation. I think I may have found something in Branson you'd like to do. I asked Jackie, so you think Nolan would want to go on a ghost tour? And of course, I knew the answer to that. A ghost tour. <laughs> you know me well. The family heads off on a six-hour road trip from their home in Stockport, Iowa, to Branson, Missouri driving through the Midwestern farming belt. Stockport is a really small town. It's basically all agricultural base. Growing up in a small town, you know, learn to enjoy this quietness that you do have whenever you know, you're not harvesting or anything. And it's nice knowing that when you go somewhere that you will know someone. I'm glad you could join us. I'm Wesley Fox, and this is my wife, Melissa. I'm an author and a paranormal investigator, and I will be your tour guide for tonight. Branson has a rich history. In the mid-1800s, this was a lawless place until the vigilantes tamed it, and then the vigilantes became the criminals. Wesley and Melissa Fox of Branson Paranormal have been leading ghost tours in Branson for the past year. All the buildings on our tour, we have either investigated or through research, we found out that they are haunted. Several of the locations, though, we do have the evidence to back up that they are very haunted. In 1912, a fire destroyed most of the downtown. This building was built after the fire. When businesses moved in several years ago, they reported hearing scratching sounds and the sound of machinery coming from the basement. Nolan's gift draws him to a ghostly presence. I would see Nolan's eyes stray. So I would look and see where he was straying at and, and never failed there was always something there. Follow me to the basement. 
Melissa, a psychic empath, can see her too. I've always called myself an empath. Most empaths can feel things, but not only can I feel them, I can sometimes see them if they want me to. Melissa and I actually both picked up on the same spirit. It was a very nice feeling because you have that confirmation, you know, that, oh, this is real, I'm seeing it. And that was really comforting to me. Follow me. Come all the way in. That's it. One of the buildings on our tour has a very rich history. The things that happened in this building have made it one of the most active haunts in Branson. In the 1920s, the KKK printed a hate-mongering newspaper right here in the basement. In the 1960s, a woman was murdered by a jealous lover at the building. It's no wonder that this is a hotbed of paranormal activity. On a regular basis, we hear knocking, scratching at this door. We've picked up voices on EVPs, electronic voice phenomenon. A lot of times, if you knock, something knocks back. Let's see if we hear anything. Well, folks, spirits will be spirits. I guess no one's answering the door tonight. Follow me. That location I don't like to go to. I've knocked on the door one time. The door pushed back at me. The feeling I got when the door pushed back was not good. There's something about that location that is just dark. Evil. Evil is the easiest way to, to put it. moving upstairs. I'm going to lock up. Thanks, Melissa. After Nolan was on the tour, people could go down there and knock on the door, and nothing happened. That location became dead, which before it was one of our most active locations. The Lydolf's vacation ends with Nolan returning to his sophomore year of high school and a horror movie date with his girlfriend, Angela. <laughs> oh my god, why are they just sitting there? Who does that? They know that nothing's going to happen. It's too early in the movie for that. We started noticing movements. They would get really close to us and then run away. And we looked over and you couldn't see anything. But we both swore that something had entered the room. <laughs> After returning from a ghost tour, 16-year-old Nolan and his girlfriend Angela sense a presence in his home. We both noticed something just kind of walk in in that light. It looked like kind of the outline of a, a child. It wasn't completely black. It had some color to it. 
but no facial features at all. Oh my God, what, what was that? While Angela has seen Nolan interact with spirits many times, this one feels different. She'd already gone through a few different things with me that were pretty unexplainable, and I think she was starting to get used to it. Well, should we be worried? No. No. Whatever that was, I don't think it means us any harm. For me, a spirit was a spirit. <laughs> I didn't think too much of it, and it didn't try to hurt me or anybody in the family, so it didn't bother me. Nolan returns home from basketball practice. Mom, I'm gonna grab a quick shower before dinner. Okay, dinner's on the table in 30. Got it. Tiger? Did you get stuck in the basement again? My room's in the basement. I heard a scraping noise. Tiger? And I thought, oh, one of the cats got down in the basement and were wanting back up. And I opened the door and there was nothing there. Tiger? So I went down and actually searched for the cat. There's no reason that that noise should have happened. I was in the shower and I heard growling. And there was nothing there. Kind of wrote it off as an animal, like one of the dogs came in and then it kind of dawned on me that I always lock the door to the bathroom, always have. So I was the only one in there. There's a back room that we use as storage. We put the decorations and everything into. I felt like there's something in there watching. It just felt really eerie down there. I've been sensing weird things. Really? Like what? When I was in the shower, I heard something. And that storage room is giving me the creeps. I talked about the back room and the feeling I got. There was something down there. I've never felt comfortable in that storage room. But this is different. What are you guys talking about over there? State secrets? Yes, we are, and you don't want to know these state secrets, trust me. Discussing the paranormal with Dennis, he just really never believed anything we was telling him, so most of the time we just didn't discuss that. It was just kind of, Nolan and I talked about it. Him and his mother talked about these things uh, more amongst themselves, and 
they knew I didn't believe a lot in that. Nolan Lightoff has been seeing spirits for most of his life. But they have never hurt him. Something scratched my right arm all the way down the forearm. Nothing should have been in my room that could scratch me. I mean, I was fast asleep. It was just really insane because it was just I woke up to a burning sensation on my arm and there's just no explanation for it. I realized it was more than just a spirit. You know, it had intentions. It wants to cause me harm. Mom, take a look at these. The first time Nolan got scratched, and he didn't know where he got them. How'd you get those scratches? I don't know. I just asked him what he did, you know, whether he scratched himself in his sleep, or I wasn't sure what he had done. Wash it and put some disinfectant on it. OK. Trim your fingernails. I didn't do this. She wondered at first if maybe I had done it to myself but I think it was obvious that I didn't. I heard my name called out, and it sounded like Dennis. And he was supposed to be at home at the time. Dennis? Dennis, is that you? You would think to yourself, am I just seeing things or is there, you know, was there something that just went by or the wind blew or something? And it's like there's really no rational explanation. Now concerned for their safety. Jackie discusses Nolan's unexplained physical attacks with his father. I'm worried, Dennis. During this time, Nolan would have scratch marks. And Jackie talked about how when I wasn't home, she would hear someone calling her name and thought it was me and go out and nobody's there. I don't know what this is all about, but he'll be OK. All of a sudden, I had scratches down my arm. Oh my God, Jackie. She had basically claw marks on her arm. Something is going on in this house. We need some help. Yes, we do. I try to rationalize everything, and there's just so much stuff going on that it can't be explained or rationalized. 
that's when he realized that we did actually have something going on, that it was physical. Not knowing where to turn, the family contacts the guides from the ghost tour, Melissa and Wesley Fox of Branson Paranormal. They were hearing growling sounds at their house. Um, Nolan and Jackie both had been scratched. And there's a scratching, especially in threes like theirs was. It was demonic. Wes explained that most of the time when it comes in a pair of threes, that it's demonic and that it's making fun of the Father, Son, and Holy Ghost. It's a mockery of it. Wesley gives instructions on how to bless the property and get rid of the demon. Three months pass by without any activity. It appears to have worked. My hope at that point was that everything was done, like it was just finally over with and that everything could go back to normal. boy came walking in hey and I looked at it like oh my nephew's here I looked over and I realized no it was just kind of a random kid had walked in the living room Sixteen-year-old Nolan Lydolf has interacted with ghosts since he was a little boy. But a gift that was once innocent and comforting has attracted unbridled evil. It changed form and it actually looked like, kind of like a gargoyle-like figure. It had the claws and it was all hunched up on the ceiling. And then it just kind of went straight up and through and disappeared. <laughs> I'd never seen anything like that. It was just so large and so close and so sudden. It just took me off guard. This was like the first moment where it ever went, this is what I look like. Here I am. This is what you're going against. It scared me. I wasn't ready for that. And I just kind of kept that in. I didn't tell anybody about that experience. Although Nolan decides to keep the terrifying experience to himself, his mother also has the ability to sense the presence is back. It wasn't the same feeling that the house had always had before. I knew it was there, but it never made itself seen to me. I mean, I just had the feeling For the last few months, the Lidoffs have been in constant contact with Melissa and Wesley Fox of Branson Paranormal. Now the family asks them to come investigate the house. My first initial feeling when I walked into the house was very uncomfortable. You could cut the tension in the house with a knife. Not necessarily between the family members, but just in general, it was very tense feeling, very heavy, and you feel like you can't breathe. It's something that is not normal in a home. When we found out that the activity had not stopped at Nolan's family's house, we didn't know if the family maybe didn't do the blessing correctly or if it's just a very strong demon. It was definitely time for an investigation. Thanks for coming. We think that the demon is still here. We can feel it. Right, Nolan? Yeah. So the scratching sounds have continued. What about knocking sounds, growling? 
Where do you want to start? In the basement. There was actually one particular location in the house that was worse than all of the others. It was downstairs in the basement. It was by Nolan's bedroom. Um, Nolan's room was uncomfortable as well. But there was a little area of the basement that was very uncomfortable. I did not like to go back there. It was a sense of dread. Evil is the easiest way to, to put it. You got something? <laughs> what are you sensing? This is it. It was very much a hot spot in the basement. My theory on spots like that is that's where the demonics concentrate a lot of their time. Planning an attack, you know, it's kind of like where, where your home base is. But the demon doesn't stay in one place for long. I could feel the entity anytime I would go into one room, it would run to another room. It was hiding. It did not want me to get a good look at it. I was outside looking at the trees, looking at the yard. There's one particular tree which I saw from the back of the house. The tree kind of creeped me out a little bit. After sensing a demonic presence, the Lydol family invites paranormal investigators into their home. We think that the demon is still here. We can feel it. It did not want me to get a good look at it. It didn't want me to get a good feeling on it. like a gargoyle. He had a really menacing grin, lots of teeth, very sharp looking teeth. It frightened me. Are you okay? What's going on? I saw it. I saw the demon. Nolan is petrified. Could it be the same demon he's been seeing? I saw it a few days ago. It looked like a kid, and then it, it just, it turned into this, this hideous thing. Everything that I started to describe, Nolan could complete. 
It was because it was the same entity. The only difference is, is it showed him that it was a child first. It never showed me the child form. He would do that to try to make Nolan basically trust it at first. The theory was that it was just trying to intimidate and basically cause fear. But where did this demon come from? Suddenly, Melissa remembers when Nolan attended the ghost tour she and her husband led. Nolan? The tour's moving upstairs. It's a very good possibility that on the ghost tour that something followed Nolan home. Because Nolan is like a beacon of light. Whenever you have gifts, it draws entities to you. The next morning, the family performs a second blessing with Wesley and Melissa's help. I am a child of God. The Spirit of God is always with me. I am never alone. God's love fills me. We knew that it was demonic. There wasn't really a question or a doubt in our minds at that point. The hope was that this time, you know, with us there to make sure that the house blessing was done exact. All evil will leave my home. With every nook and cranny that most people don't think about, that it was completely done, that we could get everything completely out of the house. For I am at peace, filled with God's love and understanding that I am truly a child of God. Amen. If it's a very strong demon, it's not going to let go easily. So we had to do more things to help out. After they left, we all were pretty hopeful that this might be the last time that anything would happen. The house. I just had a warm, warmer feeling about it and maybe a little brighter. They all agreed that what had been there was actually gone. And Melissa, before they left, she said, you know, she felt pretty good that it was gone. But as the weeks go by, Jackie begins to notice a change in Nolan. Nolan. Where'd you get that bruise? His bruises was more frequent. I mean, he had some scratches once in a while, but it was more the bruising that he would have. Was it basketball practice? No. What do you care, anyway? Hey! I was concerned about his behavior and his mood, because he was more irritable, negative. He wasn't as happy like he always was before. It started becoming pretty common for me to only get an hour or two of sleep every night. According to my mother, I was getting moodier and more upset fairly quick. Kind of started distancing myself, basically, from everyone. One night, I started having a dream. And in this dream, I would actually find myself in that back storage room. I was looking down on my own body. It looked like I had killed myself. There was just blood on the walls, and I was just laying there motionless. Visit DestinationAmerica.com.
for weeks, Nolan Lydoff has suffered terrifying nightmares in which a demon tells him to kill himself. In this dream, it looked like I had killed myself in that back storage room. It happened once or twice in a week. And then it slowly became basically every time I would go to sleep, I would have that dream. Go on, do it. killed myself. And I hear voices whisper in my ear, telling me to kill myself. And I don't know how to make it stop. When Nolan told me that he was having these nightmares and they wanted him to kill himself, I was scared. That's when I talked to Wes. Wesley Fox of Branson Paranormal has been advising the family on how to get rid of the demon. Wes, hi, it's Jackie. We're having some trouble here with Nolan. It's just getting worse. This thing is telling him to kill himself. I don't know what to do. Jackie told me about the voices that Nolan was hearing in his head, and these voices were encouraging him to kill himself and I wasn't sure how much more Nolan was going to be able to take. We were concerned that this demon was trying to take full possession of Nolan. You want to what? OK. Thank you. Bye. I think the demon is attached to Nolan, not the house. It's trying to possess him. I think he needs an exorcism. Is that safe? That sounds extreme. Do you want this thing to kill our son? No, of course not. I don't think we have a lot of other choices. You're supposed to be your family's protector. Once I realized what was actually happening, I told Jackie, I said, well, get him down there, because they, they know what they need to do. Branson paranormal demonologist and ordained minister Joe Eder leads the exorcism. When I got the phone call that he was going to commit uh, suicide, we had to do an exorcism. This demonic entity had the strength to actually interact with his, his body. Before we begin, I'm going to baptize you. In the blood of Jesus, in the word of our Lord, you are now baptized. Let's begin. Baptism is a, is a cleansing of the spirit, and I, I believe the mind. We, we the, the children, children of our, our Lord, Lord, we pray now. Now God steps in. We profess our lives to Jesus and our Lord. And a demon really can't catch on to anything. We are saved this day, this time, this hour. In Christ's name, be gone. Be gone. Good. We expel you now, demon. 
Demon, tell us your name. Demon, <clears throat> tell us your name. Come to God, Nolan. God is reaching out to you. God! Your God is a joke! We, the children, the children of, our of our Lord, we, we pray, pray now. His whole appearance changed. At that point, we knew that Nolan was not there. We have lives to Jesus, Jesus and our Lord. We are saved this day, this time, this hour. Nolan's eyes were completely black. Tell us your name, demon. Not gonna say it! And the voice coming out wasn't his voice. Say your name. No! Say it! Exotod! Exotod! I command you in Jesus' name to leave this body and return to hell! Finally, the demon released its name. Within three seconds of him saying this name and Joe repeating it, you could see all the light in the room start to return slowly, just like someone had opened up a curtain and the sun was coming into the room. The next thing I remember is waking up and just feeling really drained. Wes was just kind of like, well, how you feeling? And I'm like, I feel like I just went through a fight. It's kind of like he was waking up from a sleep, and he doesn't remember anything of it. I was very glad that it was over. With the nightmare of the demon behind them, the Lidoffs look forward to a new chapter in the family's life. You thinking about getting any training in Atlanta? No, not really. No. I mean, you hungry? I, I, definitely. <laughs> My mom, dad, and I just all kind of got, you know, closer as a unit. Breakfast afterwards. We're going to spend the night. We've got him back, and we're always there for him. If Nolan needs something, then I'll drop what I'm doing and do it. But uh, he doesn't ask a lot. I'm be serious about it. What? I'm just glad it ended up the way it ended up. There's things that happen that can't be explained. I'm not afraid anymore to bring up paranormal to people. I'm more than willing to be open and, and let them know, you know, what our experience with it was. <laughs> with everything that's gone on, we're still dealing with it. I mean, you can't get past it. It's just to be scared of something that you can't see, touch. There's nothing you can do. And that's the scary part of it. I still see family members and old family friends that have passed. I still see things all the time. I'm not gonna stay in the upstairs. That's something I feel like I'll probably have for the rest of my life and I'm okay with that. I consider it a blessing. <laughs>